Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have an interesting problem. We have two cars. They're connected by a single rope of length 15 meters over a pulley which is 3 meters above where the cars are attached to the rope. Notice that the distance from car 1 to the point directly below the pulley is 4 meters. We don't know the distance from there to the second car. We do know the height of the pulley is 3 meters and that this is 5 meters and that is 10 meters. The first car is moving to the right at this moment at 2 meters per second. We want to know how fast this car is moving at the same time. How do we do that? Well, we do have two triangles, so we'll probably will need two equations. An equation to relate these to one another and an equation to relate those to one another. Notice I labeled them C2 and X2, C1 and X1. Why will be the same for both equations? Starting with the first triangle there, what we can say is that x squared or x1 squared plus y squared equals c1 squared. If we now take the derivative of that with respect to time of both sides of the equation, let's see what we get. So we're going to take the derivative of the left side and the ddt of the right side. Now notice that y is not going to change, but x1 will change and c1 will change as the cars move into the right, which means that we have 2x1 dx1 dt plus 0, because y is not changing, equals 2c1 to the first power times dc1 dt. Now we can divide both sides by 2, and what we're going to do here, since we know dx1 dt, that's given, and we know x1 and c1, we can figure out what dc1 is equal to. And then we can relate the rate of change of c1 to the rate of change of c2, because as c1 gets longer, c2 gets smaller by the same quantity, which means that dc1 dt is going to be equal to, divide both sides by c1, we get x1 divided by c1 times dx1 dt. x1 is 4 meters, c1 is 5 meters, and dx1 dt is 2 meters per second. So this gives us 0.8 times 2, which is 1.6 meters per second, and that is the rate of change of C1 with respect to time. So that means that C1 is changing by length 1.6 meters per second as car 1 is moving to the right at 2 meters per second, which means that DC2, oh, that's the wrong place, DC2 dt will be equal to a minus 1.6 meters per second at the very same time. Remember, as C1 is getting larger, C2 is getting smaller. Now we're going to take this equation and use it on the left triangle. So now we use x2 squared plus c, oh, not c, plus y squared is equal to c2 squared. Now there's one problem here, since I'm going to need x2, I need to calculate x2. And let's see here, we know y, we know c2, so using that equation I can actually solve for x2. x2 is going to be equal to the square root of c2 squared minus y squared, which is equal to the square root of c2 at that moment is 10 meters squared, so 10 squared minus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 100 minus 9, which is 91, and that's as good as it goes, right? So the square root of 91, we'll just leave it at that. Okay, now we can take the derivative with respect to time of this equation. So we'll take the ddt of x2 squared plus y squared and set that equal to the ddt of c2 squared. Again, on the left side, we get 2x2 to the first power times dx2 dt plus 0, because y is constant, equals 2c2 times dc2 dt. And remember, we're looking for 
the rate of change of the second car with respect to time, which means we're looking for this right here. First of all, I can get rid of the twos. I can divide both sides by x2. So we get dx2 divided by dt, or the rate of change of x2 with respect to time, is a better way to say it, is c2 divided by x2 times dc2 dt. All right. So what do we have here? C2. C2 is 10 meters. And x2 is, hmm, that's right, right here, the square root of 91 meters. And dc2 dt, well, that was going to be equal to a negative 1.6 meters per second. Now, what's interesting here is even though the rate of change of C2 is negative, we know that the rate of change of 2 is going to be positive as it's moving to the right. It's getting a bigger x value. And so why do we have a negative here when actually we know that we're going to get a positive value there? Well, it turns out that since the relationship between x, y, and c is all squared, even if we get negative values, the relation between them is going to always be positive since every member of this equation, every term of this equation is squared. So even though this is a negative value, we know that we can get both the positive and the negative quantity for that. So don't get alarmed because we have a negative here that we actually realize we're going to get a positive value in the x direction. So now when we plug in the numbers, well, all we need now is a calculator. 10 divided by, take the square root of 9 to 1, times 1.6, and it turns out that the rate of change for the second car with respect to time is going to be a positive 1.68 meters per second. And that's how we do a problem like that.